So was your first deal a wholesale deal, uh, a fix and flip? What was it? So I had pretty good credit because I didn't use it. That's what's kind of funny about credit. It's like if you use it a lot, you don't get very much more and your credit score is low. I had gone through when I was a teacher, like the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University model. So I had all my all the debt paid off. I didn't understand how to leverage debt in a good way yet. So I, I actually took down my first property with a line of credit. I guess kind of really I did. I whole tailed it. I technically um, took title to it and then just sold it like, you know, did a, did a closing like four weeks later to a cash buyer. But yeah, it was 16 grand. I mean, I didn't squeeze every ounce of juice out of the deal um, like I could have. But what I did have back then, which was really important, it's not as important now, is having um, I just had some really consistent, solid buyers and um, that allowed me to create some opportunities for bigger chunks of cash today. And then, you know, allowed me to leverage into uh, long term assets. What were some of your early struggles when you were starting out? I think probably the, the first one was what to focus on and like who to market to. So it's funny, I do a lot of marketing now and I've gotten a lot better at it. Um, pretty good. But at first it was the marketing because it, you know, there's so many other people sending out the exact same thing to everybody. And so as the competition kept going up in our market, you know, the return on my ad spend kept getting lower and lower. And so I had to figure out basically what I figured out in my market was the, the problem that we were having was every other investor and wholesaler was they were sending the same messages to the same people. Like if they're on my list, they're probably on other people's lists, too. And we had you know hedge funds entering our market pretty early on and they were paying really really high prices so i knew that if i was just gonna only compete on price and and compete against people who have like multi-million dollar marketing budgets that was going to be a tough order so the good news is i just thought about what the problem was and said you know maybe i don't need to take down every deal in dallas fort worth what's like the best niche i can focus on and so what i did and what I would encourage people to consider, even if they're brand new, is like, I just kind of outline what's a perfect deal for me. And for me, a perfect deal is one where I make good profit on the deal because of a, a larger profit deal and a smaller one, they take about the same amount of time. You know, number two is I want to work with people that aren't resisting me. You know, like I would go over to people's houses and they would tell, they would argue with me when I'd show them the comps and, you know, they hadn't moved in 20 years. They don't have a real estate background. And I was like, you know, this is kind of a joke. And then, so that was number two. I want to work with people who were like, you're the expert, help me, you know? And then I want to work with people that I just enjoyed working with that were just nice people that just didn't have a clear path. You know, I was, um, and so those are the kind of people I wanted to work with. Most of my deals, I made this list when I'd already done about 30 or 40 deals. Most of the deals that I'd already done, like didn't meet all of those criteria, but the ones that did, you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out what the pattern was and that they were senior citizens, they were senior homeowners. And so that was sort of my first marketing aha moment was that there's this really large growing, fastest growing niche in our real estate space um, that I could target with different messages. Senior homeowners have different needs than millennial homeowners. They just do. They're interested in different stuff. They have different questions. So instead of sending everybody the same I'll buy your house cash in seven days, like everybody else is sending. I start sending totally different messages that were very senior centric. And as a benefit, I got a lot more calls. I had a lot more higher response rate. And then kind of the next like thing that happened after that real quick was uh, I'm at a senior's house. It was the dad and his adult children are there. So he's probably like in his early 80s. And the kids are in their, you know, 50s, early 60s kind of thing. You know, people are upset because it's like they're selling the family home. There's a lot of memories. You know, Christmas was right over there, you know, and, and but they had to do it. The dad couldn't stay in the house any longer. And so the daughter, the adult daughter said, you know, I really appreciate everything that you've done for us. Uh, you know, you've helped us out. I found the dad a new place to live, like a senior retirement home. And she said, you know, you'll know a lot about this. Have you ever thought about writing a book about this? You know, and I was like, Ajay, my lambs. I mean, that that was the furthest thing from my mind. I was like, no, I'm a math teacher. I'm not a English teacher. But then when I thought about it, I was like, you know, that's actually a pretty good idea. Because at the time in the little three cities that I focused on, 
in this huge Dallas Fort Worth metro area. I was getting known as the guy who knew a lot about seniors, but if I wrote a book about seniors and their housing struggles, I could be the guy who wrote the book on it. So that's what I did. I just wrote down, I've got a special gift for your audience at the end. If you're interested in writing your own book, we've created the first of its kind DIY guide. It's basically the framework that we didn't have when we wrote our first book, but we have now for all the books that we write. I didn't realize that a book would be such an incredible magnetic marketing engine for my business. I just, I was selfishly just kind of tired of having the four hour Q and A's in everybody's living rooms, answering the same questions over and over for three years. It was kind of burning me out. So I just wrote the answers to all those questions in the book. I wrote down all the stuff that people should ask and I just got it printed. You know, it took a couple hundred hours to write my first one. And then I just start giving it to people and you know, it became my ultimate business card and it really changed the way that I market for deals and then eventually private money forever. Mm -hmm.